Okay, hope everybody is well today. We're gonna to review the Faro Gauge, Faro's most accurate, affordable, portable CMM. So our agenda is gonna to be to discuss what is the Faro Gauge, review some of the applications, talk about some features and benefits and review the hardware and software integration. And then I'm gonna follow up with a live demonstration. So what is the Faro Gauge? Well, it's our most affordable and accurate measurement device, uh, really meant for smaller part applications, generally, let's say less than 18 inches in size. Um, so small to medium businesses are definitely gonna take advantage of this and, uh, and try to improve on their quality and reduce costs and clutter. Um, clutter meaning different hand tools, calipers, micrometers that may be on somebody's workbench. You see in the bench cam video, um, I simply have my part I want to measure and my ferro arm. Now we're going to discuss a few of the features and benefits. So the ferro gauge is a one and a half meter or 4.9 foot size uh, measuring device. Some of the features, again, that working volume, which is actually 20% more than previous ferro gauges. So it's ideal for smaller parts. Ferro uh, now has eye probes, which are kinematic release probes, quick change. So you don't need to recalibrate if you're going from a very small, sometimes fragile probe to a larger uh, probe that may be for other types of dimensions. So it's an ergonomic design, there's only two buttons, very easy for uh, new users to pick up and start using, especially if they're using it all day. It's very lightweight, easy to set up. Temperature compensating, has an internal counterbalance, which means it's very light in the hand to use all day. Uh, it comes with our universal mount, um, so it's compatible with mag mounts, vacuum mounts, uh, rolling carts. So you can set it up where you need it, by one gauge um, and leave your mounts scattered wherever you need them. Uh, it goes by international compliances. So it, uh, it's ISO 10360-12. That's very important, the dash one, two, um, not to be confused with the 10360-2, which is for fixed bed CMMs. The dash one, two is for portable articulating arm CMMs. Uh, powerful options, wireless connectivity, extended battery operation. So you can have a uh, have this tool in your in your shop all day and not have any cords, uh, no trip hazards. Okay, um, compatible with all Ferro software as well. Some of the benefits of using this tool, right, would be increased quality and reliability. So better QC assurance, uh, putting the measurement task back into the hands of the people who are actually making the parts. So it's gonna improve everybody's efficiency. No more bottlenecks in the inspection room. Uh, get the guys out on the shop floor and the girls out on the shop floor uh, measuring parts. So you're gonna maximize your ROI rather quickly um, and boost your productivity. So some typical applications where we may see the gauge, of course the quality lab, but also dimensional checks out on the shop floor, CAD to part inspection, incoming and first article inspections, machine alignments, on machine inspection, which is a big one. So pretty much throughout your whole entire manufacturing process. Some typical applications, uh, machine shops, tool and die makers, stamping, cutting, CNC machining, mills and lathes, um, all the way up to five axis because uh, this is actually a six axis arm. So we can get into a lot of uh, different places. Uh, contract part manufacturing, applications such as dimensional analysis, CAD to part inspection, troubleshooting, first article inspection, on machine verification, and uh, we also provide SPC. So the gauge versus some typical hand tools. Picture on the left here, the 3D offsets and angles. You can't check that with a pair of regular calipers. Uh, you need some sort of, uh, of a gauging tool that can get into those three axes there and check in, in, a, in a 3D as opposed to a 2D style environment. Irregular shapes. Um, on this particular picture here, a cone and plane intersection, a lot of prints dimension the small and or large diameter of a cone or an angle. Um, pretty much impossible to check unless you can check the cone and calculate where that angle uh, and circle intersect. So again, it's about accuracy and speed. We're gonna eliminate bottlenecks. Uh, we're gonna have much faster results. Nobody's waiting for a CMM. You simply pick up the gauge and start measuring the part. Again, just to wrap up with some of the accessories, uh, rolling granite carts, rolling tripods, uh, portable tripods, um, 
magnetic mounts, vacuum mounts, and uh, of course the eighth axis rotary table, depending on what types of dimensions you, need, you might need to check. So some specifications, 10360-2, like we were talking about. Some really important ones are like the P size. That is specifically the ability to probe a one inch sphere. Um, our ISO spec is three tenths, three ten thousandths of an inch, 0 0.003, or if you're in millimeters, 0 0.007. You can equate that to what it would be like if you're probing a certified ring gauge or a certified length. The other dimension that's rather important is the E uni. So this is the whole volume, 4.9 feet, 1.5 meters. Um, in 4.9 feet, we're, we are nine ten thousandths of an inch, uh, or in, in metric, 0.022 of a millimeter. The CAM2 probing software, universal CAD imports, um, has built in alignment wiz wizards, uh, very easy to do GD and T. Plus, we have the benefit of repeat part management in an RPM control center. Um, makes it very easy for non computer people to actually do repeat part measurements. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Now. Plus, there's different op options for the software. You can buy it versus uh, lease it through the uh, SAS software as a service option as well. So, that's a quick overview PowerPoint of our gauge. Now, I'm going to pull the software up. And if we watch also on the screen, I'm going to import CAD. And this can be used with or without CAD. For this demonstration, I'm just going to show you a quick example with some CAD files. So step and IGIS, parasolids are our default. Um, so we're going to import the CAD model, and then we are going to align to the CAD model. Because right now, my zero is based on the zero of the CAD, but also I have a zero of my arm. So if I use my wizard and say, align my part, I'm going to do a three-feature alignment. We're going to choose a plane, circle, and align. And then we're going to measure those alignment features. So. Now that I have the arm out of the rest position, I'm going to set it on the plane. Simply hit the green button and take my data points. Now I'm going to measure the circle. I can see on the screen it's highlighting the large center circle. I'm going to go ahead and probe that. And I also get instant feedback on the screen, which is pretty helpful. I know if my circle is close to the right size and location. Now in this part, I know that my tertiary feature, my line is actually out of tolerance. So I expect to see that lit up in red, um, but I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm gonna use this as my alignment feature. Looking on the screen now, I can see that my probe matches my CAD. I can move back and forth. I can see my alignment. So I know I've got a good alignment. So now I'm ready to measure the features that I want to measure. And because I'm using CAD, CAD has all my nominal data. I can let the software populate my nominals for me by simply clicking on a few of these features. And we're just going to throw the circle. Um, as you move around, on the screen doing the pick feature. You can pick planes, circles, um, cylinders. For this example, I'm just gonna probe these cylinders or these circles rather. So I can do this as a right click, add measurement. So we're gonna go ahead and probe. So now as I pull my, pick my arm back up, as an operator, I simply make that orange line shorter and go to the green circle in this case. So now I know I'm in the right location. This circle. And then on to this feature. Okay. So those features have been probed. I can see down here in the bottom, I have actual versus nominal data. I'm within my default plus or minus two thou tolerance. Let's go ahead and do just a couple more features. Let's maybe find out what a length of this part is from here to here. 
Uh, the other way actually is to measure all, and I do not want to measure previous features, only the new features that I expect. Keep forgetting to use that handy little tool we had. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and probe. And then we're going to probe the other plane. Okay, so now that our two planes are probed, we can also create a length from that feature. So we can find out what our distance is across here. So here's our length. Anything that is checked down here in our feature list, it's what's gonna show up on our report. Um, take our circles, for example. I don't really wanna see Z on my report. So all of those, um, if I uncheck that, that cleans up my report a little bit. I can also turn labels on and get to see um, things on the screen in 3D style environment as well. Pretty handy. So at this point, let's say I'm done. I've checked uh, all the features I wanted to check. I'm going to add these features now to my report. So there's my list of features. CAM2 is generating a PDF report for me. And then I can scroll through this report now to see what information is in here. I can see what is passed and what has failed. I see my length is under. Um, at this point, if I'm done, I can go ahead and save this part. We're just going to name this uh, test run. So we talked about um, different software features as well, RPM. I'm gonna end this uh, recording for now. And in my next video, we are going to review the RPM, the repeat part management. Hope you enjoyed learning about the uh, Ferro Gauge.